with the last huge update, there is a new quest available in Quasimorph. If you don't know how to start, finish or succeed at it, you've come to the right place. Full disclosure though, this new quest is very hard and I suggest some preparation beforehand to make sure you have the best odds to be able to make it. This quest does feel like it is meant to be done mid to late game. I've died around 5 times while attempting it, so if you value your loadout and or your operator, think twice. In this video I'm going to show you one way it can be achieved. We'll go through the build, the loadout, all the very important prerequisites and finally the actual quest guide on the map. Let's start with my strategy and how I pulled it off. I'm certain there are a multitude of different ways to do it. In the end we're talking about Quasimorph where there's not one single best way to play. To me and for my preferred gameplay I chose the fan favorite usual overpowered class Tunnel Rats. However, with the help of one of the amazing new mechanics that were introduced in the latest update, the Memory Improvement Module, Tunnel Rats can become even more busted. And that's exactly what I went for. The only perk substitution I did was to get rid of shelters and use CQC Specialist from Scout of Hades. Since this build heavily relies on shotguns, having the CQC Specialist perk to reduce the scatter when shooting is extremely powerful. It goes without saying that having the class perks at the maximum level is recommended to get the most benefits out of these perks. It's not impossible to do without it, but it definitely improves your chances. Class check. So what operator do we choose to run Tunnel Rats? You should know by now that we heavily rely on Percy, which in combination with this class becomes a magnificent powerhouse due to basically being a tank. Maximilian Roar is another operator who can also be a potential choice because of his immunity to stun. However, the higher health value and the huge amount of resistances you get from Percy make him the best choice. Class check, operator check, let's talk weapons. This will be easy because we will narrow down our choice to… Shotguns, of course. I succeeded by using a regular Jeff Hammer or even a Crash Mod P. No crazy weapons here, right? No, wrong! We'll create an absolutely insanely powerful weapon out of these very weak ones by, once again, using one of the new mechanics, the arsenal, where we can mod and upgrade weapons. Using my tinfoil hat I can predict that for sure the developers are going to adjust just how broken some of these new mechanics can be and balance it out. For now, enjoy it while you can. We're going to modify the Jeff Hammer and improve its damage by a lot. As you can see, because we're talking about cheap, low tier common weapons, the item requirements to do something obscene like this are almost negligible. Some weapon parts, some metal pipes, a couple of chips and you just created an absolute monster of a weapon. Just craft some of these after the project has been developed and you're good to kill pretty much anything. Let's talk mission loadout now. Why only use one busted Jeff Hammer when you can have two? Because we will have to deal with both Task Clan and heavy armored realware enemies in this mission, I advise you to take two of these babies. As you can see on the vest slots, I recommend using flechette ammo in one shotgun and regular buckshot in the other. This way you'll have what is necessary to deal two of the most important damage types for this mission, piercing and cut. And because I mentioned the vest slots, it's worth noting that having a good vest like this veteran is great. You can put the two different ammo types in there for quicker reloading and a proper medkit for emergencies. Regarding armor, select good overall armor pieces. Something like this Arbiter and Com Policeman set should be enough to start. I say start because if all goes according to plan, you should be getting out of the mission with a full wheelware carnage set. The armor you choose just needs to be somewhat strong to resist some earlier damage. You'll be switching out the pieces for better stuff you'll find throughout the location. As far as a backpack goes, I suggest a fighter for at least 3 rows or best case scenario, if you have one, the bigger buffalo backpack. So what do you need for survival in terms of items? Antibiotics to deal with infections and poison? I'd say it's almost impossible on this mission for you to take no damage at all. Are you familiar with the less is more term? 
Forget that. Don't be cheap and bring enough resources to ensure success. We have our meds next. Five military grade med kits in the vest, five medical glues and five splints. You'll also get a ton of rags from enemies if necessary. At least one of these weapon repair kits to be certain that your shotguns are always usable. Two if you really want to be safe. Three if you don't want to worry about it. I also take some weapon parts to repair our weapons, but these aren't really necessary because you'll get a lot of them by dismantling enemy weapons. Again, better safe than sorry, am I right? Food for a potential four long floors of fighting. However, don't forget that we're running tunnel rats with a maximum leveled marauder bird. Pretty much any realware enemy you loot will have some food for you, therefore this isn't as important. Some extra stacks of ammo and morphine, a lot of morphine to be safe. This takes place on Venus, so we'll have the Quasimorph level rising. It will never reach 1000 and spawn a boss though. Nevertheless, you do not want to deal with powerful, hard to kill Tasklan units. Realware will also engage them and vice versa, but using morphine to lower the Quasimorph level, it's one less danger you can avoid. Why morphine and not cigarettes? I prefer the morphine because it also lowers our pain level, as a tiny bonus on the side and it has healing properties. It can be done with cigarettes, but morphine is just a better choice. And as you should know, because you want to avoid addiction's negative effects, bring some naloxone as well. As you can see, with this loadout we still have one full extra road to loot stuff and we'll need it, because there are some items you must pick up. Let's talk about the prerequisites that you need to accomplish this. Some of them you already noticed for sure. The critical one is unlocking Tunnel Rat class. Again, my recommendation is when starting, don't stop farming Mars until you have everything you need to do this. With some luck involved, you should get a Tunnel Rat's class chip and then everything gets easier. You'll need to farm the necessary items to upgrade your Magnum department so you can modify the weapons and the class. Also, you should aim to get either the Jeff Hammer or the Crash Mod P item chip so you can mod the weapon and craft it. Try to also unlock Percy while farming since it's part of the whole strategy. Other than these, all you're going to need is patience, the items we've gone through in the loadout and a little bit of luck on the side. One thing I've seen asked over and over again is how to actually start Community and Anarchy. That's the name of this quest. Yes, you can skip the tutorial and still do the quest. Whether you do it or not doesn't matter because it starts by selling a specific item to Ancom. When you start a new run, you will have an item called Secret Data in your Magnum Cargo Hold. You start in Phobos, so just navigate to Mars and trade it in with Ancom to trigger the quest start. After doing that, Jane will hint at you what I just talked about. That staying within Mars to farm is a good idea and as soon as you're ready, make your way to Venus. Upon your arrival at Venus, Ancom will contact you immediately to offer a contract that takes place on a location called Odibior 3. This is the quest contract. Select that contract from the list and try not to die. The contract has four long floors. Luck is now a factor because when you're moving from one floor to the other, you'll be greeted with enemies. How many and how strong is random, but these are usually the hardest parts, so think carefully before taking any actions. Your magnum lands and you'll kill a couple of realware units. You're now looking for the elevator so you can make your way down. Eventually, by killing enemies, Ancom will confirm that these are indeed realware units. To help you out, they will send two capsules with resources. Open these and loot the experimental weapon from one and the two plasma grenades from the other. The weapon is not even close to a substitute for what you are using if you're following this guide. But nevertheless, it can come in handy because it can stun humanoids. You might encounter real wear units in a full carnage set. These are hard to kill units due to their very strong armor. This gun can stun them so you can safely deal damage, kill them and steal their armor. However, if you really raise the shotgun damage by a lot, you have nothing to worry about and this experimental gun is pretty much worthless to you. If you spot one of these enemies wearing a full carnage armor set, try to kill one. 
If you get to the last phase of the mission wearing this full set, things will be much, much easier. Not to mention that your resistances will be crazy high, making you very hard to kill. The plasma grenades though, those you will need. At least one. Make sure you hold on to one to use in the very last part of the mission. These do devastating damage and can kill multiple highly armored enemies with ease. Keep moving throughout the floor and try to find the elevator. When you do, you want to go directly to the last floor, the archaeological cave where the mission objective is. As soon as you get there, Jane will tell you that quasimorphic activity is being detected and you'll have to fight your way out. No news here. Unfortunately, as you probably heard, the elevator collapsed and it's no longer usable. This means that from this point on, you'll have to fight your way through back to the upper level by using the staircase instead. Remember and try to keep the Quasimorph level under control from now on. Also, try not to let any enemies shoot their guns that deal cold damage. This is still one of the most dangerous things that can kill you. Start moving through the archaeological cave until you meet Ganex, who is protecting the crystal skull. Precisely the item you're after. It should be very easy to kill with a single burst and if you want to, you can loot his corpse and get his unique claw weapons. They're good, but again, compared to whatever you're running, they suck. Take them as a trophy if you like. More importantly, search the golden altar in the room and loot the crystal skull. There should be another door in that room that leads you directly to the staircase out of there. Take it and you reach the archive floor and you're probably met with realware units. Again, take your time and plan accordingly. Don't be afraid to use your shotgun bursts or even chis a little bit for heals by using the stairs again since these enemies won't follow you to the floor below. Once again, make your way through the level until you find the staircase. When you go up, you'll be on the communications floor with more real wary enemies to kill. Fight your way through the level one last time and search the final stairs that will lead you back to the surface. Eventually, when you're close, Jane will contact you saying you have bigger problems and you should get to the Magnum as fast as possible. Jane never lies to you, so strongly consider what she's saying. Before going up to the first mission floor, make sure you have your ammo topped up in the vest slot, health at maximum and everything prepared to what is the most difficult part of the whole mission. As soon as you get there, you'll notice that the whole location is being bombarded. You will see the red marks appearing on the floor tiles. Avoid these, since that's where the explosion will happen. If you have good enough armor like the Carnage set I mentioned before, these explosions and the fire damage won't be a problem to you. So the only thing you need to worry about is to make your way safely back to the Magnum as fast as possible. Now is the perfect time to use that plasma grenade we were holding on to. Use it as soon as you pop out of those stairs because it might kill a ton of enemies waiting for you in the adjacent room. After that, put your shotguns on burst mode, change to run movement mode and kill everything in your path. Keep moving left until you see the landing area while avoiding the explosions. That's it, extract and the quest is done. All of this for absolutely nothing because there's no reward and the crystal skull you looted is nowhere to be seen. Also, Ancom now hates you, but screw those guys. It's all about the journey, not the destination. Don't lose hope though, there's another quest in the game that grants you a pretty cool unique weapon as a reward. Watch my Unlock Mars Quasimorphs video next to learn how to do it. Thanks for watching, have a great day and I'll see you in my next video, bye bye!